I'm Jim and I'm going to do some upgrades here on the way my lower cowl attaches. As you can see there's four screws right now and you know they're uh, just a nut on the inside and if we look at this hole you know for example you can see it's all wallowed out and yuck you know it's not any better on the other side of the hole either. So I'll give you a shot down the inside there's the nuts on the inside. You can see how bad that hole is. So I'm gonna put in some nut plates, that's the plan. And uh, some reinforcement fiberglass along here. And well, if you wanna come along for the ride, you're welcome. So there it is with the cowl off. Sorry about the shaking. Ah, uh, and you can kind of see the mess I have with extra holes and you can see how wallowed out that is. So, yeah, we're gonna fix that. The other side, that's one of the cam locks, and then this is the first of the screw holes for the lower cowl. Stress cracks and extra holes, and I think it's due. Okay, so I need a nice, I'm gonna put a strip of a cloth on here glass cloth with some epoxy, but I need a clean surface, so I'm going to, rather than get a big orbital sander or something and being lazy not wanting to do it by hand, I'm just going to try this. interesting. There's a metal washer epoxy in here in a random place. It's stuck in there somehow. Okay. Well. Smells like polyester. What's going on here? I guess that's why we're reinforcing it. Okay, so I'm gonna put some duct tape on the outside because epoxy doesn't stick to duct, duct tape. And I'll bring it back. Okay, so we mix up some juice. One pump should do it. Okay, I'm going to mix that and throw it away because there was air in the pump. And if you don't get the mix right, it didn't work. Um, and you can't put in extra hardener to be sure because usually it's, if it goes wrong, it's because you put in too much hardener more than likely. So I'm just going to throw this away. Okay, so we're getting this wiped out. Uh, on boat, boat building forums I used to frequent, a uh, common complaint was, you know, somebody would write in and they mixed up some fiberglass resin and they used lots of hardener, but they have a sticky gooey mess and they want to know if they can, you know, fix it by putting more hardener on the outside. Uh, no, epoxy, you have to get the right proportions are pretty close, period. Too much hardener is not a good thing, so it's not enough. It just has to be right. And it has to be thoroughly mixed. Those are the two things that go wrong. You didn't get the right amounts, and you didn't do enough mixing. You didn't scrape the sides and the bottom enough. wet so the cloth will stick in place. Okay. A little 
extra resolve. Just enough to make sure it's all wet out. And that will be good reinforcement for this whole area. And we'll you know, go back and fill the holes on the outside with the mixture of epoxy and colloidal silica or cabosil if you want a brand name. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then I'll go do it to the uh, cowl piece that's attached to the airplane still, the base, if you would, and uh, get back with you then. And as long as I got it off and we're doing fiberglass, this is what I did, how I modified the inlet. The original inlet was just this lip. Um, and the radiator kind of just sat in the breeze behind it, you know. If I created this duct, there's uh, some wedges under here, wood wedges, to get the right, um, a little bit of sharp fiberglass there, uh, to get the right angle, and then the mounts here and here for the um, radiator. There's some mounts here and here, some holes for the uh, oil cooler brackets, and then this for the heater, which I started and, well, got stalled on. Got to get back to that just as long as I'm here. Okay, so at this point, the upper cowl is attached to the airplane with the existing fasteners, the two halves are fastened together. I got a screwdriver wedged in here to give me the perfect vertical positioning and now we can mark and drill the holes on the sides. Okay. Hopefully I can duplicate what I did on the other side. Uh, cowl's in place, you know, it's screwdriver under the front to get it centered on the Crankshaft, or not crankshaft, uh, prop shaft. Got the holes drilled on the other side. Now I got to do this side. Um, these need a little more touch up and then at some point could be painted, but uh, it's July. I'd rather go flying, so we're going to fly it ugly for a while. Uh, still, right? So the spacing I came up with on the other side, if I put the first one at one inch and then I go two and a half. I got to get new bifocals. Not that you care about that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that gives me six fasteners, um, evenly spaced. I mostly miss that one's a little close. That one be okay. I mostly miss the, um, you know, the old holes. Okay. Yeah, so the nut plate is going to end up in that patch, but it's pretty solid. Same up here. Okay, so those should be reasonably use my digital calipers to double check my work. Yep. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Okay. And I'm drilling through both layers so I can locate my nut plates on the inside. Drop the cowl, put the nut plates in, and put it back on. It's going to take a little bit of wrestling to get this off. I'll, uh... Oh, what the heck, let's put that on film, right? Watch the bozo.
there is the screwdriver. my screwdriver. Okay, so it funny thing about this YouTube thing, it makes a difference when you press, press record or not. Uh, so I already did that one. Okay, so what I got here, so I've got a nut plate with the screw screwed in it backwards. I can put it in the hole, use it as a drill template. And I can put the Clico in from behind so that the Clico isn't in the way of my drill chuck because these are close together. Get it in the hole, there we go. So that's in the hole, that's in the hole. And there we go. Another three, six, another nine more to go. Uh, you don't need to watch that, right? Okay, so I got my uh, microstop countersink and I set it. It's a matter of, you don't want this to move. fiberglass is soft enough I boogered up one hole there. Put that flush, eh? Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, plus another 12. 16 more to go. Do you want to watch them all? Or you got the point? I think you got the picture. Okay, and one nice thing about a redundant job like this is if you forget to plus record the first 20 times, we're doing a hundred of them, so not a hundred, but dozens. Okay, so hopefully, well, I just checked, I just pressed record. That goes there, that slides onto that. Lines up with that hole. Take E old rivet, it should stick through. One and a half diameters, and squish it down to about half a diameter of the rivet. Well, that was how not to do it. Fiberglass is slippery. You have the, uh, you know, when you have nut plates behind and you're not fishing around back there for a um, nut and trying to reach inside and out at the same time. Plus, with these riveted in place, they shouldn't wallow out the holes. That's the theory, anyhow, right? through the hole in the nut plate, that would help, right? Well, if you've ever been to Greenfield Village, they've got uh, Buckminster Fuller's Dymaxion House. And the idea was that, um, yeah, oops. Well, the idea was that the uh, aircraft manufacturers would build these houses out of aluminum and rivets and and somehow they'd uh, and the claim was that they'd be able to sell these houses for the price of a car essentially 
I don't think so, considering how labor intensive this is. You know, put the cleat go, you pick the rivet that sticks out one and a half diameters. I mean, if you got multiple people and you're not bending back and forth, putting the tools down, picking tools up, it's faster, but still. Uh, oh, gosh. I can't believe I did that. Very good at riveting, I guess, and especially not left handed. There we go. But yeah, as labor intensive as that is, uh, I think Buckminster was running a scam. I don't know, somebody was. And there they are, six screws in a row. I didn't record just actually screwing the screws in, you know. And if we look down inside, I don't know if the light's good enough. Okay, there's all the nut plates. So, I hope you found it entertaining. Learned something from my mistakes, you know. <laughs> uh, catch you later. Bye.